everybody, welcome to another installment of the Games of 90. I'm Robert Solomon, and this month, like every other month that we're going to do this show, until we run out of shows to do, we'll take a look at a game show that either debuted, got revived, had a major format, or host change in the year 1990, and I'll tell you if it's good enough, since there were so many game shows in 1990 that I thought this year was special enough to give it its own series. And this month... We're going to take a look at one show that helped cultivate a cable network's impact. Cable was a great haven for game shows, especially when it came to fledgling networks that would put on game shows to get their networks noticed. USA had an entire three to four hour block dedicated to reruns of the Barry Enright Library, Hollywood Squares with John Davidson, and the Pyramids, among other shows, to go along with reruns of originals like Jackpot and final new episodes of Bumper Stumpers and the new Chain Reaction. Nickelodeon also was getting back into the game with renewals of Think Fast, Make the Grade, a revival of Family Double Dare, and a newcomer of Wild and Crazy Kids. Along with countless other networks who are creating new games to bring into market, one of the big winners of the 90s, however, was the Lifetime Network. Now, the Lifetime Network was a very successful channel thanks to its game shows and also for its TV movies. I'll let the cinema stop deal with those TV movies. I will deal with the game shows. Now, they had five game shows that debuted in the decade of the 1990s. Four of them were really good. Three of them are still well known to this day. One of them is the subject for today's show. And that fifth game show that sucked the big one was Born Lucky. I already talked about that on Game Show Garbage. Go to the website to check that out. Now, for the show that I'm talking about today, it made its debut along with Supermarket Sweep on February 5th, 1990. So, right after Supermarket Sweep... We got a narration from Robin Leach to talk about this brand new game show that's supposed to be really good, and it was, but it was short-lived. Let's go and take a walk down Rodeo Drive. Hi everyone, I'm Louise Duart. I just heard something that's really interesting about one of the famous people who shop along the street. When he's not pitching, pitcher Oral Hershiser relaxes in the dugout by reading Jackie Collins' novel. Could that be true? Well, we'll find out on the street of stunning stores and stories where the glitter meets the dirt, Rodeo Drive. Rodeo Drive was given a prime slot following Supermarket Sweep on February 5th, 1990. What should have seemed to be a long-running duo of game shows for the next few years turned into a mega success for Supermarket Sweep, but Rodeo Drive was relegated to obscurity on August 31st, 1990. This is to say it's not the fault of the show itself. The show itself is really good. It's got a neat format, colorful set, and it seemed like a lot of fun to be on. Female impressionist comedian Louise Duarte was tapped to host the show, and as a first-time host, she does a good job. Her style of celebrity impersonations and wit helped her out with the celebrity-driven show. She had a great grasp on how the show was played, and by all accounts looked to have a great time with the show. If there's one knock I do have against her, though, is that she does tend to overstay the impersonations than they should. But that's a minor flaw than anything else. It doesn't take away that she was good. She was the type of MC you want in a light-hearted game like this. And while talking about the game, it is really good too, albeit a mismatch of a few other formats. The first round has one of the three contestants playing a word game that involves one contestant trying to list off a bunch of words describing a famous person. The contestant picks a number from 1 to 7 and has to say the right word that corresponds with that number in 15 seconds. Hmm. I wonder where I've seen a show like this before. Hmm. Let's talk. Whether the subject is news anchors, garage sales, or the love boat, it's something you'll hear about when we all play Talk About. And here's the man who has everybody talking, Wayne Cox. Hi, John. Hi, Rose. Hi, there. Hi, Janine Hill. Oh, boy. I hope you're ready for some fun. We certainly are here on Talk About. 20 seconds. Talk About. Camels. Camels chew their cud. They spit. They store water in their hump. Camels have two humps and one hump. There are two types of camels. Arabs wear camels. Yes! Right. You got it! You got it! Yeah! Well done! Congratulations! We got a perfect tan up on the board there. May I congratulate? 
Yeah, the show is ripping off Talk About there, but I don't mind it. Talk About is great, and Rodeo Drive put its own spin on its format. Instead of getting all ten words on a subject, it's trying to find that one word that is the winner. If they do so, they get the points attached to the word, ranging from 100 points to 300 points, depending on how hard the word is to come up with. Also, the other two contestants would earn 50 points each if they correctly predicted the opponent would get the word in 15 seconds. Round two would have all the contestants organized from highest score to lowest score. They'd play a factor room around to determine the winner. The highest score went first with Louisa's statements, complete with her impressions if needed. A correct prediction was worth 100 points. A wrong one would pass control to the next person in line. It drags on for seven minutes before time is called, and we have a winner, and they receive $500 and play the bonus game for some nice prizes and a cash jackpot. Like I said, it's okay. It just needed another round to break up this super long round that kind of gets grating after a while. The bonus round works in two parts. The first part had the contestant be given a fact and two celebrities. They had to determine if the fact belonged to one celebrity, the other celebrity, or both. A correct answer added $200 to the cash jackpot, which started at $1,000 and carried over to the next show if the contestant failed the end game. They were asked a total of five questions, so three right added $600, one right $200, five was worth $1,000, you get the idea from there. I like the idea of a building jackpot, and the idea of this endgame stuck with the concept of the gossip and added another tweet that made it worthwhile. Yes, I know what you're all thinking. It's a version of Dish or Daff from You Don't Know Jack. But this show predates the computer game by over six years, and the game show by 11. And to be honest, I prefer it here. I'm sorry, I don't think You Don't Know Jack is a good game show at all. I love the video games, but not the game show. The second part of the bonus round brings out the Rodeo Drive players when they are featured in front of four stores and the bank. Each of the players will be talking to a cardboard cutout describing a celebrity and the champion must correctly guess the celebrity. Once they do, they reveal the prize and move on to the next store. After four stores, they move on to the bank where if they identify that fifth celebrity, they win all the prizes and the cash jackpot. They have to accomplish this in 60 seconds. If they fail the bonus game, though, then the champion gets to pick one of the prizes they did reveal, and the cash jackpot carries over to the next show. I really love this bonus game. I really do. It's the right amount of silliness and tension that makes a show like this click, much like the rest of the show does. Sadly, it didn't last too long. And it's kind of a curse for Jay Wolpert, the show's producer. He knew what he was doing with game shows all along. Sadly for him, the shows that he produced from his own production company would always wind up short-lived, only one of them lasting longer than a year, and that was Shopping Spree. In conclusion, the show was really good. Good gameplay, the Beast was a fun host, and the budget was good as well, especially for cable at the time. The show would leave the airwaves on August 31st, 1990, more than likely due to low ratings in comparison to Supermarket Sweep, which was becoming the savior of the network from ratings obscurity. Well, that's all I got to say about Rodeo Drive. Good show, unfortunately short-lived. Well, that's going to do it for this installment of the Games of 90. I am Robert Settlement, and next time we see you on the Games of 90, I got another short-lived game show from 1990 from the cable world that you really should check out and seek from Tape Traders or watch the two or so episodes that are on YouTube. Well, that's going to do it for me. I'm Robert Settlement. Goodbye, everyone.